This is Bill McCready for Futures Trading Secrets. This is lesson two in the series of seven lessons we're putting out to kind of eliminate the oubliettes, we call it, in uh, the trading world of all these courses that are running around. I have been doing this for a while, so uh, remember that we always have the CFTC notice, which the government's trying to protect yourself from, protect you from, or me from, or everybody from. So just read that and understand that you can lose more money than you can make in trading. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about indicator math. My background is I have two degrees in mathematics and engineering physics and I also have a master's degree in nuclear engineering uh, applied to nuclear submarines. So all these uh, mathematical constructs are really pretty second nature to me and a lot of people that have trouble with math don't really understand what indicators do so I'm going to try to clear things up very simply. Now first of all there are literally hundreds of indicators and all these indicators do is smooth the data into something more meaningful than just a price action. As you get better at this, you'll probably learn to trade only on price action, but initially most people rely on indicators. And all they do is they take different data streams and try to mathematically manipulate them to make them smoother to give you some other indication of what the market is doing. Now button th or bullet three here really is that you can calculate things differently. So a moving average can be a simple, a smooth, an exponential, a weighted, a Gaussian, all kinds of different mathematical constructs to smooth the price and they can be moved forward, backwards, sideways, upside down and turned around. Uh, the other thing is if you're going to calculate a MACD like an MACD uh, with multiple moving averages you can use different types on different ones to try to get as close as possible to when the market turns. That's all people are trying to do. The problem is the way you calculate these indicators and the way you calculate the indicator on certain data streams, in other words, you could calculate uh, uh, MACD on a stochastic if you want, okay? It can get very, very complex. And so using different data inputs makes it even more uh, difficult. And so basically, uh, all of these indicators do is rely on the previous data. So they're either trying to be early predictive, uh, right on the money, or late. And you'll see some of these things later. Now, what are data, what data is used for indicators? Well, the most popular is to do data on the price. And the person I learned to trade from, Chick Goslin, uh, way back in 97, 98, is he said, we only trade price. So that's the only valid indicator that you really want to look at, especially if you're doing it this on fairly short time frame. The other thing is you could uh, calculate uh, an indicator on the volume and that is a po pretty popular indicator called the balance of power. Now we use different time frames and you can either use minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, whatever you want to do, or in a particular time if you're short term trade day trading you want probably want to use ticks. Now a tick chart is interesting in that you have a hundred uh, tick chart or 100 bar tick chart that means within that one bar if it's a hundred listed as a hundred you have a hundred trades that can be a hundred and one lots or a hundred thousand lots or a hundred of any combination it shows the activity of traders trading and often this is much more accurate than using a, t a particular time frame like one or two or five minutes or whatever now third type of indicator calculates support and resistance. This is a very visual area but if you look at the support and resistance from the previous day you will be amazed how often uh, price bounces off those support and resistance le levels the next day or the day you're trading. Uh, there are also Fibonacci and Pesavento patterns. Now both of these work, Fibonacci's especially, uh, because people think they work not because there's anything special about them but mostly it's about the fact that people like them they use them and when you get close to a turning point or a Fibonacci retracement number like 0.618 the market tends to stop and hesitate before it goes through or turns around. Uh, another aspect is the market profile. Uh, I've never used that, don't use it much. 
uh, found that it again is showing big history and showing where the market has tended to oscillate. Now there are magnetic attractors almost in the price like uh, 72 or 50 or the even number like 11,000 things like that. So you can use that but I've not found that to be very effective. Finally, there are Japanese candlesticks, and there are several ways to use all the candlestick patterns, and there's also Kagi and Renko candlestick patterns. And now, these have been around since the 14th century when the rice traders used them in Japan. They're very predictive, and if you're using time frames uh, rather than tick charts, they're very accurate, and the signals, especially when com combined with other um, regular Western indicators are very, very effective. So you want to use a combination of two or three of these to give you the best indication of what's going on. Now, a lot of people uh, also use combinations of the following. They might use moving average with the MACD or stochastic, RSI and momentum, CCI with some things. And a lot of times people get too many indicators. And one of the problems is the bottom uh, bullet here talks about well, these indicators are collinear. They're showing you the same thing because they're all calculated on the price. Now, the more indicators you get, the more confused you get, in my opinion. If you think about memorizing phone number, it's easy with area code and the seven digits. But try memorizing an international phone number and you'll find out that you get lost in the shuffle and you are not able to do it. So let me show you an indication of something that has too many indicators. This particular chart has 11 indicators on it and you've got all kinds of crosses and moves and all this kind of stuff. This one looks pretty good up here uh, as a moving average without all the other red, green, yellow turning colors back and forth down here. And if you recognize this, I know Ken Wood. Uh, I tried to trade his program for a long time, and I just got confused with too many indicators. I guess I'm getting old and I have a simple mind. This is a system I developed for Futures Trading Secrets. It really encompasses several things. And I left out the support and resistance here because I use two time frames when I'm trading. But this is on a tick chart, and these arrows print automatically, and what they represent are both Fibonacci numbers and Pesavento numbers. For example, a Pesavento number is based on the square root of 2. 1.414 is the square root of 2. And these are Fibonacci numbers of 2.0 or 0.5 or 0.786. Um, and so you get this as a predictive, and this is really the first part uh, of our 1, 2, 3 simple um, indicator system. The other indicators down here are triple derivatives of the price. So we have moving averages, which give us a general tide, and we see a lot of bouncing off of this. These are, this is a 49 to 89 moving average. I don't mind telling you what those are. There are a lot of patterns associated with these two moving averages used by professionals, and that's where I got them. The red and green line is a long-term indicator and the purple and white is a short-term indicator. So if we look at when these turn, and I'll show you later where the exact signals are, you can see that there's a higher high on the indicator, higher high on the price, but then we get a lower high on the indicator and the equal high on the price, and we use what is called a divergence trade. Now the difference between a double uh, uh, a second derivative of the price, like a MACD, a stochastic, or whatever, is they tend to lag or give you false signals. A triple derivative gives you the accurate signal of, of a proper divergence. Now, here's a good example, again, of using this very simply. These numbers, the first uh, uh, arrow, are just basically uh, alerts. And if you get one of those, you should get out. If you're in long, you should get out when you get that arrow. Now those arrows move because there are different levels of support and resistance. You probably got an arrow right here when you reached this previous uh, resistance level. Then we've got another one. And the more arrows that meet from up, down, and below, the stronger the signal. And this would give you an indication that you can see there's the arrow. 
and the indicator has not changed. It started to turn over, but as soon as it changes to another color, you should go short. And here we can see we had a slightly lower low. We had an equal low on the indicator, a divergence. We got the arrow, we got the color change, and we generally uh, trade when we cross the uh, moving average of that indicator. And you would have had a nice move from, I don't know, four or five points here. So watch for the next signal, and we'll be talking about some basics of money management uh, next time. So thanks for listening, and we will see you later.